Hello guys, how are you doing? Today we're gonna talk about convolutional neural networks in natural language processing by presenting an architecture that outperforms really well on user-generated text data and then provide an implementation in PyTorch. If you guys have a bit of experience with CNN, this may probably seem odd at first sight because when we hear about these networks, we usually think about applications in computer vision. We think, for example, about image classification, object localization, or instance segmentation. But we don't necessarily think about text. In fact, if you look at the history of CNN, you will see that these networks have become really popular in the computer vision area when the AlexNet network won the ImageNet competition in 2012. And since then, a keen interest around these networks spread like wildfire and researchers started improving them by making them deeper, more robust, and faster to train. This consequently led to the emergence of networks that outperform the human eye in many applications. For example, in medical imagery, CNN are able today to diagnose cancer and segment tumors really well, and in the autonomous vehicle industry, they are shipped in cars in order to detect people or passengers or vehicles and then avoid accidents. Although this was great for the computer vision community, people started wondering how CNN could also be used in other areas. So in 2015, Jan LeCun and his team wrote a paper that proposed a CNN architecture specifically designed for text classification and operating at a character level. This was intriguing. How could text be processed by convolutions? And why would it be processed at a character level instead of a word level? The intuition LeCun and his team had when writing this paper was that text is no different from any other signal and just like image it can be processed as a raw composition of bare units that are not pixels but characters. To understand how this network works in practice let's first see how a classical CNN works on image data and then draw the analogy. When a trained convenience classifies an image, it starts from the raw pixels of the image, it then applies a series of convolutions, pooling and nonlinear operations until it condenses all the visual information we have in the image inside a vector, and then this vector is passed through a complex function that maps the image to its corresponding class. Basically, in a convnet we have two parts, one part that is able to extract the visual feature or the, sequ or the sequential information that we may need, and then a classification part composed of fully connected layer that will take all the information we extracted beforehand, compile them, and then make a decision. This process obviously works because the network was trained by backpropagation, adjusting the filter values of uh, the kernels at each training step of the network. Okay, now let's go back to text. Since, as we said, text can be also considered as a signal, we can apply convolutions on it. But this time, instead of having 2D kernels that slide horizontally and vertically over the pixels, we will have one-dimensional kernel that will slide horizontally over the character. Okay, uh, if this is a still not clear to you guys, it's normal. I haven't shown you yet how text should be pre-processed before being fed to a character CNN. This is a key step. Let's see how this is done in an example. Imagine that you have a set, a set of English tweets that you wish to classify in either positive or negative. In order to prepare this data to be fed to the character level CNN, you have to define two things. An alphabet that contains all the characters that you may need, it will be composed of letters, digits, and special characters, and for the English alphabet, it will be of size 70. Then you have to fix maximum length for all your tweets. This is more of a training hack to make all your documents of same size so that they can be put in batches. Now, given these two elements, uh, how can we turn each tweet to a matrix or a tensor? Okay, let's see an example. This sentence, I really love this show, will be uh, transformed into a tensor. The first thing that we have to do is split this sentence into characters and turn each character into a one-hot vector, which is an indicator of the position of this character in the alphabet. We have to do this for all the characters and the blank characters as well. And then we have to pad with zero values to eventually attend the um, uh, maximum length of the tweets. Okay, that's pretty much it. This process allows us to turn every tweet into a tensor, a 0-1 matrix, which is of size 140 per 70. Please notice that the only pre-processing here we made was lower casing the text. We didn't do any stemming, lemmatization, tokenization, we didn't do anything complex. Okay, now that we know how to turn text into a tensor, uh, let's see how to do convolutions. 
We earlier said that we won't be using 2D convolutions because 2D convolutions are adapted to images and 2D information only. However, text is one-dimensional data because letters, characters follow each other sequentially to form a meaning. And that's why we will be using one-dimensional kernel. Let's see how this is done in the previous example of the sentence that we transformed into a matrix. Well, how to apply one-dimensional kernel over this matrix? Please, before applying the convolution, have in mind that each column that you see here is a character of the sentence that is projected on a 70 dimension. Uh, and then when we apply a one-dimensional kernel over this uh, matrix, we will do it as the following. This, at each step, this kernel will uh, compute a scalar product between all these rows in gray, uh, then compute the sum of the result. At the end, this will calculate the convolutions between the first three characters. Then this kernel will slide horizontally over the matrix. It will calculate the same computations again, 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 until the end. When we finish, we will have an output shape equal to 1, 1, 136. Because 1, 1 here designates the number of sentences in input or batch size. Uh, basically, now we have one uh, image, so it's equal to 1. This number is equal to the number of kernels we apply. And this number is equal to the output shape when we apply a convolution of size 3 to an input shape of 140. Uh, in practice, we won't be using uh, a single kernel, but we will be using 256 kernel or more. And consequently, the shape will be this one. In practice, we will have many convolution layer and per each convolution layer we will have a large a very large number of features uh, so what we call feature here is the number of kernel and kernel here is the size of the kernel and here pool uh, is the shape of the pooling layer this this is the architecture that Yan Le Kun presented in his paper Okay, now the question that you may ask, should I use character convolutional neural networks for text classification? Well, the answer is yes, only if your data is noisy. For example, tweets, misspelled words, or slangs are part of your dataset. You can rely on convolutional neural network because they are very suited to uh, user-generated content and noisy content uh, that you may have. And then you also need your data to be large, and a rule of thumb is over 1 million documents. In any case, character level CNN are very good because they have very nice properties. They don't need text pre-processing. They handle misspelled and out of vocabulary word very well. They are really fast to train when you use GPU because uh, convolutions are very well parallelized. And then they have the model that you get at the end will be relatively uh, small in size compared to world level models or a recurrent neural network. This can be very useful in practice when you want to deploy your model in production and uh, have a, a very small memory footprint. Okay, that's it. I hope you guys are still interested in the subject because now I'm going to show you an implementation I did of this paper using PyTorch. Okay, now let's see what the code looks like. Actually, you can get everything from my GitHub account from this link. You can go through it and you will see some information about character-based convolutional neural networks. You will see the architecture used in this paper, some motivational speech about CNN and character CNN in general. I used actually this network to train a sentiment classifier on French customer reviews. The dataset I used was scrapped from web and it is quite large, it has more than 3 million rows. Uh, the results I, I got from it uh, were pretty good, I report them over here. Basically I have more than uh, 0.9 F1 score and accuracy on test and validation. Metrics are reported also on TensorBoard, you can check them. Uh, this, these are the dependencies. These, this is the structure of the code. Basically, we will have a train 
dot py for training prediction dot py for prediction some configuration that you can tweak and config the json and also you'll have a folder inside the folder you'll have a cnn model dot py for mobile data loader for preparing the data to the training some utilities script in the utils dot py and then how to use the code uh, you have basically two parts one part for training and the other part for prediction for training you will have parameters that you can read about here for prediction you have the same thing as well and when you want to plot your training metrics to tensorboard you have to make sure that you have also tensorflow installed and then run this command once this command is running you can go to your local host and on this port and uh, click on it okay so um before going to the demo i should mention that i have trained a model on French customer reviews. Uh, it does a sentiment anal classification uh, part. It's a binary classification, but the output that you will get when uh, inferring will be a uh, probability, which is kind of cool because it can be interpreted as a sentiment score. So if you guys need it, it's uh, over here. And while using it, make sure you use these extra characters because we are in French and set the maximum length to uh, 300. Okay, now in this demo, I will show you basically how I train this French sentiment model, and you will see it right now. Okay, so uh, while running this command, I have to specify the data path, the validation split, the label column, the label, the text column, and also some other information that like the maximum length, the epochs, the patients, and the extra characters. Okay, so when Okay, so when I, when I run this, okay, actually I'm not in the right folder, okay, uh, yes, okay, now the data is loading. <coughs> okay, once the data is loaded, we have the training that starts over, this is the first epoch, and what you see here are the different batches. We report the loss and the accuracy, and once the training is done over one epoch, uh, we go to uh, the validation part. And if you want to see the metrics of training in TensorBoard, we can run this command. And you can check the result by going to this link. Which is kind of cool, right? You can see the training loss, training accuracy, uh, training F1. Okay, so let's see if the training is done. Okay, so now we finished validation on Epoch 1 and now we are going through the Epoch 2, the, the training part of Epoch 2. Okay, so we can just see this if we, if we refresh it. Okay. Which is kind of cool. We see that the training accuracy is increasing, the training loss is decreasing, obviously. And we should also have the same pattern on the validation data, but you have to smooth it a little bit. Okay, so now we will see that we're seeing that the loss hopefully start to decrease from the epoch 2. Okay, normally we have we are done with with epoch two. Okay, all right. Okay, so you you see that testing loss is decreasing. Okay, okay. Now we have a cool pattern. That's it. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestion or any comment, you can drop them in the comment section below. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, short summary about character-based CNN. Uh, please tell me if you're interested in other subjects. And thanks, thanks again for watching and see you next time.